Good morning. It's John Gilkison, Aerostealth here. It is uh, Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. And I wanted to shoot a short video today on the uh, Tesla semi truck. Uh, they had another reveal, or whatever you call it, where they turned over some Tesla semi trucks to uh, Frito Lay and PepsiCo. And they had done a 500 mile trip uh, delivery in the uh, semi truck from Fresno to San Diego, which they reported uh, 1.7 miles, uh, excuse me, 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile as an efficiency average. And they uh, said they were, their gross weight was 81,000 pounds. Um, now I'm not clear, it's supposedly they used a box trailer, but uh, Parts of the video show them hauling a load of, uh, of uh, Jersey barriers on a flatbed. So it's unclear to me which trailer they used. But yeah, regardless, uh, the figures they reported indicate they have a battery pack in the truck somewhere between 850 and 900 kilowatt hours of capacity. And... Um, 1.7 uh, kilowatt hours per mile is exceptionally good for a semi truck. Uh, this is telling me that the actual road load of the truck is probably uh, 1.5 uh, kilowatts uh, hours per mile, or maybe slightly less, depending. And they, because uh, that's an aspirational goal to reach. 1.5 and I think that uh, probably the best efficiency they're going to see out of the whole drivetrain is around 95 percent so um, it's possible a little more but uh, anyway this is a, a, an epic event really when you think about it and the thing that occurred to me right away was that uh, that this semi truck is more energy efficient than my 2014 Ford EcoBoost uh, pickup truck, which has a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. My truck weighs about 6,000 pounds, and uh, it uh, can average around 18 miles per gallon on the highway on a good day. So, um, and it turns out that the Tesla semi truck is averaging 23. So if this don't shake some people up, it may take a while for it to settle in on them. But uh, these are this is just incredible results. And this really goes to show you the efficiency of electric drive over internal combustion engines. Um, they're literally three, 3.5 times more energy efficient, depending. So I made up a little table, which uh, hopefully I can show you here. Let's see what we can do here. Of course, it's all backwards to me, so... I'm going to have to read some of this out to you. So I'm trying to uh, give you enough time to freeze frame this or whatever. So you can reference some of the things. But here's what I got. Um, so uh, the, the frontal area of the... Uh, Tesla semi truck is 106 square feet. And they're claiming it has a coefficient of drag of 0.36 or 37. And um, 
This would give it a, a coefficient of drag area of around 38, 39. And my truck has 36 square feet of frontal area and a 0 0.40 drag coefficient, which would give it a, a CDA around 14.4. Well, it turns out that 14.4 is, is about 2.5 times better than a Tesla semi-truck. Coefficient drag area is the most important figure that you need to note here. Uh, coefficient of drag is a dimensionless number and means nothing by itself. Um, and this is one of the things I wanted to discuss with you this morning about this whole idea of saying, well, the Tesla semi-truck has a coefficient of drag of 0.36 or 0.37. Uh, that's just meaningless. It's without context. Because without knowing what trailer you attach to the Tesla semi-truck, you really don't know what the coefficient of drag of the whole unit is. And uh, so, um, a lack of clarity there is a bit astonishing. But the road load tells the whole story. So, if, if they only have a CDA two and a half times worse than my truck, and they're still getting better fuel efficiency, and their electric drive is over three times more efficient, then that explains why their, their, um, their truck is more efficient, the semi-truck is more efficient than my smaller pickup truck. Even though my, they have several times the mass too. And I've been trying to talk about this for a long time, that mass isn't the main story, it's aerodynamic drag. And I think this is proof of concept right here. That an 81,000 pound semi truck can have better fuel mileage than a pickup truck. It's empty. That tells you that mass isn't the culprit. Yes, I'll grant you that it takes more energy to move mass. And the more mass you have, it's going to take a little bit more energy, but it's a linear function. And aerodynamic drag goes up. If you're doing 70 miles per hour, the aerodynamic drag, drag completely overwhelms those uh, rolling resistance numbers. So, there you have it. Um, I hope more people catch on to this. Um, I think Bubba ought to be scratching his head out there to, to realize that there's semi-trucks going down the highway that are getting better fuel mileage than his pickup truck. Um, this is a major coup, um, and they just need to produce more of these trucks. So uh, apparently they sell a couple hundred thousand semi trucks a year. So it's going to take a while to make a dent in that market. But uh, any company, meaning major company, that gets a hold of these, uh, who's doing a lot of semi truck miles, is the fuel savings are just going to be astronomical. Um, I made up another table, and this is a, a table down below. Let's see if I can show you that. Right there. And what I'm trying to show here, it's a table of kilowatt hours per mile converted to miles per gallon E. And typically, in, in my car on the dash, it says miles per kilowatt hour. But obviously, once um, once you're doing less than one mile per kilowatt hour, you're going to want to change metrics because it comes kind of awkward. Like, for example, a Tesla semi truck is quoted as 1.7 uh, kilowatt hours per mile. Well, that turns out to be 0.588 miles per kilowatt hour while carrying all those decimal places. So, and it's a little bit awkward, and it is a better metric for vehicles that are in that uh, fuel hungry of a range. So, anyway, so turns out my truck, for example, compared to the Tesla semi truck, my truck is getting 1.87 kilowatt hours per mile versus 1.7 for the Tesla semi truck. So, 
I was not happy to hear this, although I knew it was coming. But details are a little bit hard to get, especially when it comes to Tesla. And uh, but but uh, this reveal so far is uh, is uh, really bringing home the point about the efficiency of electric drive and aerodynamics. Even though they don't, I understand why Tesla doesn't want to talk about aerodynamics because there's so much misinformation out there about it. And very few people really understand even the basic principles of aerodynamics as it applies to land transport. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, happy trucking, everybody. Uh, I would love to have one of the, the smaller semi-truck, the 300-mile range one, for towing my fifth wheel. <laughs> that would be a major coup. <laughs> Can you imagine? Going from 9.5 miles per gallon up to uh, 25 miles per gallon or something. <laughs> Equivalent. I'd have no trouble making 300 miles a day in that thing. Uh, I just can't afford to buy one. It, my truck costs 37500 new. <laughs> this uh, Tesla semi truck's in the 100 and the smaller ones in the 150,000 range, if you could get one, which you can't. So, anyway, someone will do it. <laughs> Someone's already put a artist rendering out there of a smaller Tesla semi truck converted into a motorhome. <laughs> so, there's some people out there with their thinking caps on. Good day, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.